hat, then you can bring in that sticker we gave you. NFO. <coughs> Welcome to our U.S. Farm Report. Today, I want to introduce three businessmen from Minnesota who are principal organizers of the Committee for Rural Economic Survival, which is sponsored, sponsoring a crusade to save rural America. Arnold Paulson, president of the Granite Falls, Minnesota, business and promotional uh, business, industrial and promotional agency, Granite Falls, Minnesota. Elmo Volstead, Secretary of the Granite Falls Businessmen, who is also Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Commerce. Bob Wadsworth, Executive Director, who is a Minneapolis businessman. Our show today is entitled, Help Save Rural America. My name is Arnold Paulson from Granite Falls, Minnesota. I'm the president of the Crusade to Save Rural America. This is a rather recent organization which is operating through the upper Midwest and which is fastly spreading out throughout rural America. But now the purpose of our crusade to save rural America is something that should be of vast importance to people everywhere, especially the people living in the rural areas. I would like to explain briefly the purpose and the objectives of our organization. But before doing so, I would also like to read a statement for you at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, are you helping rural America to commit suicide in this era of the great society? Are you ready to erect the gravestone which says, here lies your town, killed by apathy and unconcern? Because the planning for the so-called great society does entail your suicide. If and when the well-organized and already begun new adaptive program for agriculture is completed, your rural America, including your farm, your business, and your community, will become but a memory. This is what the Committee for Rural Economic Development says rural Americans are doing, and what will happen if the well-known CED report, which the President seems to be using as a guide, is translated into reality. The committee is a new nonprofit organization started by a group of upper Midwest businessmen and farmers with headquarters at Granite Falls, Minnesota. The committee is doing more than describe the situation. It has proposed a solution in the form of a crusade to save rural America by restoring fair farm prices for farmers. <clears throat> As a spokesman for the committee, committee said, don't you think that it's time for rural America to wake up and fight to prevent its own extinction. Today, every segment of our e country's economy is organized and fighting for its welfare. Every segment, with the exception of rural America. We alone stand alone, unorganized, and in many cases, unaware and unconcerned. You can be sure that the CED, the Committee for Economic Destruction, has taken this into account. Many people think it's already too late. We agree that time is our worst enemy, but it is never too late to salvage what remains and to reverse the trend. We thought the on that only a crusade could awaken rural people to the fact that they are unwittingly marching to destruction. The Committee for Rural Economic Development or the Committee for Rural Economic Survival was started because Myself, Arnold Paulson, has ex been explaining to people throughout America, business men and farmers throughout the entire farm area have been waking up to the problems and asking to help bring about the solution, a restoration of fair farm prices to farmers. Fair farm prices would be simply prices which gives farmer a fair profit above their operating costs. We can't expect farmers to continue continue to operate on credit instead of earned income. <clears throat> the chief aim of the crusade is an educational program 
because today ignorance of our economy is our greatest problem. Communities must be awakened to a realization of, on how, of how their money is created, how it is spent, and where it is spent. This is the first requisite in understanding community economic problems. Only when rural Americans understand what they are losing will they become concerned enough to act. Now here are some of the things that we are doing to alert the people to action. One, we are sponsoring rural economic surveys showing communities the economic growth in their community, where their money originates, how it is spent, and where it is spent. We are also producing movies to be used by business, farm, and service organizations to tell this story. We are producing television and radio shorts and commercials, producing newspaper and magazine releases and ads. We are producing regular newsletters for rural Americans who want to, know, to join the crusade and become better informed of what's happening to their way of life. We are also organizing speakers bureaus to bring the message to all of rural America, not hundreds of people, but to millions of people. We're also promoting an effective lobbyist organization to fight for the best interests of rural America in our state legislatures and in our nation's capital. We are also promoting vigorously the support of the collective bargaining program to obtain fair farm prices because we believe that this is a realistic solution to the rural American problems. Now we are also pointing out that far-reaching undertakings of this nature cannot be realized without the financial support of thousands of people. A crusade needs believers and cannot be affected without their dedicated support. A crusade also needs ideas and services. We want rural Americans to contribute these as well. Now, a few people who are listening to this program today are interested and concerned about the survival of rural America, and you would like more information about the objectives of this organization, we encourage you to write to the Committee for Rural Survival, National Headquarters, Granite Falls, Minnesota. <clears throat> well, now we want to discuss some of the problems with you folks that have a tendency to destroy our way of life. And we're going to be quite frank this afternoon, or I should say quite blunt, and we're going to hit the nail on the head because we are firmly aware and convinced that there is a well-organized program in America today that is dedicated to destroy rural America as we know it. And the main objective for this destruction is the American farmer. <clears throat> now, the question has been asked, isn't it just possible that there is an even larger purpose behind all of this? For example, it is a fact in history that when a to totalitarian state wished to wishes to enslave another country, its final and crushing moves are against the last truly democratic elements in that country. In Eastern Europe after the Second World War, these were the peasant parties. When they fell, these countries fell to enslavement. In our country, the equivalent of the peasant parties are the small, independent farmers and businessmen in the rural communities. If they can be eliminated by means of deliberately unfair farm prices, then the large corporations can take over the land and we can have the equi equivalent of the collective farm. It is not a great step for a central government. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, is it not a great step for a central government to control all of us if they can control big business, big labor, and big farming? Could this be the great society into which we are heading with such enthusiasm. As I have said, it is just a supposition, but it is worth thinking about. Well, now let's get into some more of the facts. And Elmo, I would like to have you explain some of the thinking that's going on in rural America today and uh, possibly some of the feeling that's going on because of lack of thinking and uh, what rural communities are attempting to do to solve their economic problems. Would you like to comment, Mr. Volstead? Well, Arnold, it's apparent in rural America, I've discovered in my speaking engagements throughout the Midwest, that people nowadays are feeling, they're not thinking. Communities everywhere throughout the great Midwest have 
promotional committees to attract industry to their community. This is fine. Industry is needed. But the greatest product, the greatest industry of all, agriculture, is being overlooked. Our farmers are leaving. In Minnesota last year, we lost 3% or 2,000. We're going to be down to 50%, they tell us. Something must be done and can be done to save rural America, to save the farmer. In our own community, we have lost one of a large hatchery that supplied six to five states. We've lost an independent grain elevator. Uh, machinery dealers have disappeared. And still, the business people throughout the area are looking for more industry. Now, most of our poultry, our fryers and so forth, come from the south. Now, the big threat to Midwest beef feeders is a new look at the south as far as beef feeding is concerned. Now, the NFO is working on collective bar bargaining for the farmer. But what can the businessman do? Many businessmen refuse to take a stand. They refuse to look at this, either through apathy or the, the fright or the scare or the fear that they're going to lose a customer or two if they take a stand. Unless businessmen throughout this 26, 20 state area start taking a stand, they're not only going to lose a customer or two, but their business will go down the drain with it. This committee to save rural America gives the businessman an opportunity to do something, to help, to save his school, to save his church, to save his community and his farmer friends. Uh, Arnold, uh, I believe that covers that. Uh, thank you, Elmo. Now, uh, this is basically the problem today in rural America because it's ignorance of what's going on. And as Elmo mentioned, the people of America today, for some reason or other, don't think, they feel. And ever so often, we, ha we happen to overhear people make this frequent remark at very simple uh, questions or statements. They say, gosh, I never thought of that. Uh, and this is true. The American people just do not use the faculties that God gave them to think. And it's high time that we start thinking and start, uh, rather than feeling if we're going to solve this problem. Because if the people living in rural America are not concerned enough to wake up and do something about it, I don't know who will. Actually, the people in rural, rural America have been sleeping sounder than Rip Van Winkle and for a much longer time. And the purpose of our crusade is to wake these people up and to inform them of the forces that are at work to destroy their very way of life. And Bob, I would like to have you bring in a few comments at this time. Well, Arnold, I'd just like to bring in a few statistics here which uh, prove our point and which are very vital to people in the big cities. Now, as you know, I come from Minneapolis, and this is just as important to the people in the big cities as it is uh, to rural America. For example, the last time that we had uh, true prosperity uh, in this country uh, was in the period roughly from 1940 to 1950. Now, I'm looking at statistics here which have been gathered by the Independent Bankers Association in their task force uh, in uh, which they sent to Washington to gather these facts. Now, uh, in that decade from 1940 to 1950, uh, there was a true balanced economy with all the major segments uh, of our economy receiving their fair share. For example, the gross national income increased 196%. Farm production, uh, the value uh, uh, of farm production increased 195%. Wages and salaries increased 196%. Private enterprise uh, income, including uh, income to corporations, increased 209%. They're all in balance. Now, in the period from 19, roughly 1950 to 1964, uh, here is what happened. The uh, other segments of the economy continued to grow. Uh, wages and salaries grew 148%. Rental income, income went up 63.5%. Corporation and small business profits went up uh, 75 to 85%. Interest income went up 460%, but farm income went down 16.9%. Now, this might seem irrelevant to the city person, but let me quote something here from the 
uh, independent bankers report. Uh, just uh, last year, for example, industry actually deprived itself of an estimated $35 billion market in a wide variety of goods that farmers use. Now, the basic reason why industry is actually depriving itself of income, and through industry, uh, all people in the country, is the fact that most city people don't know that every dollar of true farm income generates seven dollars in the gross national product. Now, this is because there is a cycle uh, that happens when farmers spend, mon uh, spend their money that is true income money, not debt money. They spend it with retail merchants in rural communities and in cities, uh, who in turn spend it with a wholesaler. Uh, who would have spent it with a manufacturer? Uh, who would have in turn spent it for more raw materials and for labor? Who in turn could have spent it, uh, these increased earnings for things produced from farm raw materials and the, start, and the cycle starts all over again. Now, what I would like to uh, ask you, Red, uh, at this time uh, is this. This is undoubtedly true that the, the farm income has been going down while the rest of the, the income from other parts of our economy have been going up in the last 12 years. Now, could this have all happened by accident? Bob, absolutely not. You know as well as I do because we've been studying this thing. And in my hand right now, I have authoritative, authoritative facts that absolutely prove that this has been planned. Uh, there has been a deliberate attempt by government and by the economic advisors of our country deliberately forcing farm price prices down to help stabilize or balance uh, what they call inflation. But they feel that by robbing farmers out of their fair share of the national income, that it will help to stabilize this economy, but in result, it has just brought on greater profits for the large corporations and the big industries. But here is the sad part of what a rural America must pay for the low farm prices that have occurred since 1950. Every penny of prosperity that this nation has enjoyed from 1950 to 1964 has to be paid back because it has all been based on borrowed money. Paid back, did I say? Yes, plus an additional $98 billion. Every penny of profit earned by every corporation in the United States during this period of time could not pay off the increased private debt that took place in this country during the same period of time. And so, Bob, you can see that it, this has not only affected the farmers, but it's been passed on to every man, woman, and child living in America. And we have embezzled all of this from our children and their future. And unless farm prices are restored, within a period of a very few years, we will be forced into the biggest depression that this world has ever seen. Now, Elmo, I don't want to dominate all of this time. I uh, would like to turn this over to you. Possibly you've got a question you'd like to present to us or something you'd like to bring out at this time. Well, I believe that the Main Street merchant in this 26, 28 state area must start to realize that every dollar that has been robbed from our farmer has taken seven dollars away from the national picture. A farm dollar makes seven turns around in our economy. And we have been robbing ourselves, robbing our Main Streets, and robbing our government of this money by taking it away from the farmer. This apparent planned robbery is sending rural America right down the drain. The farm dollar makes seven dollars of our economy, and the labor dollar only turns over three dollars and fifty-eight cents. Now, Arnold, what is our solution? Well, Elmo, we know that we've got to find a solution, that just alerting people to the problems that exist in rural America today is not going to solve this thing. Uh, the, the first objective of our crusade is an educational program. Because unless we awaken the American people from their slumber and uh, bring them to a realization that this problem really exists and pointing out the effects and the losses that it has on the individual, they will never become concerned. So our first job is to point out to people what they are losing because 
of this farm problem. When I refer to they, I'm speaking of ministers, superintendents of schools, bankers, labor, the professional people living in the big cities, and most of all, the economy of the United States. Now, once we have alerted the people so that they are aware of these problems, then we have to have the program that can do the job. And of course, this is the toughest problem of them all. Now, we've made a very thorough study of the various plans that are in operation today to help farmers. Let's take a look at one of the programs that are proposed by one group of people. They say that if we can only get agriculture out of the hands of government and return it to free enterprise, that this thing will solve itself. Well, now we've studied the farm program, the supply, the, the supply and demand on the open market without any controls, and we found that the only time that this program has ever worked is during a war or during a famine. It has never worked any other time in history. And I'm sure that the American people do not want a war or a famine to restore fair farm prices to farmers. So we must look to another solution. Now we have other people who feel that the government will solve this problem for them. Well, now I have been a strong supporter of this theory for many years. And if I was convinced that the government had any intention whatsoever of solving this problem, I would support it vigorously, as I have in the past. But as I have studied some of the programs and some of the things that the federal government has done to bring on this mass destruction to the rural economy, I am absolutely convinced that our government has no intentions whatsoever to restore fair farm prices to rural America, because if they do, they will upset the plans that they had originally to destroy the farmer. So I have written off any hopes of the government solving this problem. So we have to look to another solution. And we can uh, use a good example of labor. Labor was in the same position several years ago when uh, industry and corporations were exploiting these people. And finally, the day arrived that labor woke up from their slumber, and they decided that if they were going to get their fair share of the economy, that they would have to do it themselves. So first, they got le legislation through a Wagner Act that made it possible for them to organize. And after they had the, the tools to do it, then they took the problem into their own hands and formed their unions. And today, labor is getting their fair share of the national economy. Now, the farmers are going to have to follow a similar pattern. We say that the farmers must get control of their industry, that farmers must become businessmen and manage their own business and their own industry. And until they can get control of it and market their own products and place their own price on their products in the marketplace, will they ever be able to solve the problem once and for all? But of course, when farmers begin to organize and say that we want to be businessmen, we think that it's time to put a price on our own product, then the opposition moves in. Now, these aren't very pretty words, but I call the opposition the leeches and the scavengers because these, this is what they are. They have been robbing farmers for years, and they have been growing fat at the expense of the farmers. So naturally, they don't like it when the farmer wakes up and starts to fight for his share, his fair share. And so consequently, lots of propaganda starts spreading throughout the country, a lot of lies and smear tactics against these farmers. But this has happened before in history, and it will continue to happen in the future. But in spite of these people, the farmers must organize and band together their production and put a price on it at the marketplace. And there is such an organization in existence in America today. And this organi organization is called the National Farmers Organization. And after all of my research and study, looking at all sides of the questions, studying the programs of the other organizations, I have come to a very definite conclusion that this is the solution to the agricultural problem. It is the solution to the problem for the rural communities. And it is the only thing that can restore the stable dollar in America and once again give this nation a 
sound, basic, healthy economy instead of one which is based on debt. And so I encourage farmers and businessmen everywhere throughout rural America to take a real good, honest, inside look at the program that the National Farmers Organization offers you to save your farm, to save your business, to save your community. Because unless we get together and start thinking together through a one-unit organization that can accomplish this thing, we will go down the drain. Now, I would like to mention a few words to the members of other farm organizations. I'm not asking you to believe as I do, but I'm offering an, or extending this challenge that you better survey the programs that your organization offers, analyze them very carefully, and be absolutely sure that they have the answer or the solution, because the challenge is yours, and you better be right, because we are living in serious times, and if you are not right, and if you are not backing the right program, it will be your farm that will go down the drain. You will be one of the memories in history. You will be included among the two and one-half million farmers who will be forced to leave the land. And from the businessman's standpoint, when these 10 million farm people erode from rural America, hundreds of thousands of rural businesses will go down the drain with them, plus thousands of rural communities, their churches, their schools, and their other institutions. And this is the price that rural America must pay for the mistake that leaders in government have made in the past years by deliberately robbing farmers through forcing down intentionally farm income. Now, Robert, do you want to say a few words in close? Oh, yes, let me have this very quickly before we go off the air. One of the finest publications that I have ever read on the farm problem is Farm Temple Magazine USA. This magazine is published in Marshall, Minnesota. It's one of the most informative magazines on the farm problem and on the economic problem that anyone, farmer, businessman, or executive could ever read. And I highly encourage each and every one of you to subscribe to this. It's only $2 a year, and it's one of the most educational magazines you could ever read. You can order this by sending your subscription to Farm Tempo, Marshall, Minnesota, or if you would like to get in touch with us, send it to the Committee for Economic Survival, National Headquarters, Granite Falls, Minnesota. The subscription price is $2 a year. Read it. Wake up. Become, become educated. And once you do, you too will become, become concerned and want to do something to salvage your way of life. Bob? Well, I don't think I can say anything uh, after that, Arnold. I'll How just much time say do we amen. have left, Elmo? Not one minute. About well, one minute. I think. Butch I wonder Wayne. if Butch Swain would like to add a few words. Yes. Arnold, I would. I would like to thank you fellows for appearing on this program today because, folks, these are businessmen that are unsolicited, that have come out in support of the National Farmers Organization, not only because they need to save the farmers, because they need to save their own business their own community. Think about it. They are running a campaign throughout America, help save rural America. And they have done a world of good all over the area. They're furnishing speakers to Chamber of Commerces and other places, anyone, anywhere that would like a speaker that can really set the record straight, contact this committee for Rural Economic Survival, Granite Falls, Minnesota, or contact the station to which you are listening. It's time that America wakes up. Now, one more thing, thinking about the whole thing, summing it up. Seven out of every 10 farmers in America are scheduled to go. There's no need for it, and there's no excuse for it. Thank you. <laughs>